results are to be announced on Monday, and a runoff is April 21st. To break it all down for us, Yuval Weber is the Kennan Institute Fellow at the Daniel Morgan Graduate School. Yuval, thanks so much for coming in today. Thank well, you. as we mentioned, early results show the political newcomer, uh, Zelensky, and current leader per Poroshenko, winning this first round. Mm -hmm. Any surprises here for you? No, uh, Zelensky had been leading in the polls all the way through. Uh, President Poroshenko had been uh, at times a distant second, but he pulled the race closer in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the biggest result is that Yulia Tymoshenko, who had been part of Ukrainian politics seemingly for, for you know, the last decade and a half, uh, finished in third and will not be uh, taking part in the next round, although she could be called upon to uh, endorse one of her uh, rivals uh, in the second round of voting. Let's talk about Zelensky. He is such an unconventional uh, candidate. Why do you think he is so popular? So uh, there, there are several reasons. One is he's a professional comedian and actor, so he is a handsome guy, knows how to speak, always has a joke ready. Uh, but what really is sort of explains his popularity is that his really big role is he played a high school history teacher who in class goes on a rant against Ukrainian corruption, oligarchs, bureaucracy. One of the students films it, and then that clip goes viral. Mm. And one thing leads to another in the show, and he becomes the president of Ukraine. And so the whole show is about him battling all the very issues that Zelensky, the actual candidate, is also going against. So what Zelensky was able to do over the course of the real political campaign is use the persona of the act of the role that he played in order to use his inexperience as an asset, to use his lack of political experience as basically something that people could could fall behind. And without taking very strong policy positions, he just had a general positive change anti-corruption message, which people uh, felt was very popular. So TV becomes reality in a sense. Yeah, so a fictional <laughs> character now becomes the real guy. Interesting. You mentioned corruption. Um, what other differences are, are, are there between these two top front runners right now? So President Poroshenko, the incumbent, he has taken one of his early um, slogans was army language faith. So he is the guy who wants to take a tougher line against Russia to stress Ukrainian language over Russian language and to create the, a new Ukrainian Orthodox Church against the Russian Orthodox Church. So really going against Russia in every possible way. What Zelensky did is he was able to speak to crowds who wanted to hear him in Russian, speak in Russian. Crowds who wanted to hear him speak in Ukrainian, he spoke in Ukrainian. So whereas Poroshenko is anti-Russia in all ways, Zelensky was more open to different sorts of crowds. And so he allowed people to ascribe their beliefs and their hopes and dreams onto him. We have less than a minute, uh, sure. really shortly. Um, so what can we expect in the next few weeks as we wait for the second round, perhaps? So certainly the, the role of Russia in this is they want anyone but Poroshenko. Poroshenko is really the strongest anti-Russian candidate. So if we'll see anything, um, Poroshenko and all of his allies will try to pin uh, Zelensky down. What are his actually policy positions? And Zelensky will try to remain positive and above the fray. But otherwise, we're going to see a lot of horse trading, a lot of coalition building. It's probably pretty ugly for the next couple of weeks. We'll be watching as well as you, I'm sure. Yuval Weber, thank you so much for coming in today and breaking it all down for us.